What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Clown Blog. We're going to hit it and quit it, because I know there are many places y'all could honestly be. So let's hit it and quit it. Let's get in here. Listen, this show is about how to fight inflation. But first, let me kick it off. Welcome to the show. My name is Erica Williams of the Classy Clown Blog. Excuse me. Author of Smartphone Millionaire Book, How to Invest in People, Businesses, and Real Estate from the Palm of Your Hand. Grab it on Amazon. You can grab it in the links. Uh, again, remember, August 23rd, we out of here, baby, to December 3rd. Now, you may catch clips of us on Instagram. You may catch clips of us in our house building projects in Granbury, Texas, and St. Petersburg, Florida. Woo, Jesus, we just trying to wrap it up, baby, for the summer. But y'all get to see some great footage from that. You may have to do it a separate channel, just uh, call it a real estate channel, right? Also, and then we have a... Um, August 19th and 20th, we have the boat party. We're 38 days away. I'm super excited in Austin, Texas. Winery, we're locked up in there four hours. Enjoy the winery, live music, wine, food on us. Second day is the boat party. We're going to get up on that boat and live our best lives. Again, we got Andy Buys Houses. We got Miss CG Notes. We got D DJ The Money Coach. We've got uh, Tim Jackson, Antoine Wade, Michael Sneed of Appliance Boot Camp will be there. We have, oh gosh. Asia Denson, Marcus, we, we got a lot of people, they coming, okay, y'all get to sit and talk with them and chat with them, and also mix and mingle, and also maybe one or, few, one or two tasks we might do um, while we're there, you might like that, okay, so anyway, that's coming, October 13th through 15th will be Panama, we'll take a group of less than 40, probably 35 is where we're going to cap it at, uh, bus tour properties. You're going to see million dollar properties in Panama, and you're going to see properties for 150000 that you can invest in and buy separate from me. They already got the funding straight, man. Like people were there signing through Prosperity Bank, but I can't tell you all those details. Uh, coming up October 13th through 15th, it's going to be lit, all inclusive resort, breakfast, lunch, and dinners there. You just got to get your butt to the Panama. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't talking about Panama, Florida. I'm talking about Panama City, Panama. Uh, and last but not least, I think November. Four through eight, we'll be speaking somewhere in Las Vegas. Uh, we'll give you more details when that comes up. But you guys, it's going to be a great year. I'm super excited. Oh, August 4th through 7th, we're doing multiple cities. We're hitting Invest Fest. We're hitting Asia's Denton, Detroit Real Estate. We're also hitting CPAC in Dallas. It's going to be crazy lit that weekend, and you will love it. Okay, so let's get on to hyperinflation. What is hyperinflation, y'all? Listen, the CPI data came out that it's 9%. Y'all know it's not 9.1%. We just can't have America out there like Turkey, right? Turkey's at like 68% inflation right now. Uh, some of them Argentina companies, when, they're, when, they're, when their currency starts to crash and go under, they have this astronomical double 50, 60% inflation. So America can never say, hey, man, inflation right now about 35%, right? Because I live in Austin, Texas, and houses went from 275 to 500,000. 300,000 houses went to 600,000. Is that not 50%? Is that not hyperinflation? Now you're going to say, well, Erica, I live in Ohio and the houses are still 85,000 here. Yes, don't get it twisted. I'm still doing the video where I'm going to go through multiple cities. I may have to pre-record some of it and show you where properties are under 200,000 in multiple cities. Some of y'all just lying. That's all there is to it. You dig what I'm saying? So what is hyperinflation? If you look at Argentina, you look at many South American countries, you know, one week you're going to buy stuff for 10 cent. Now it's you know, $5, right? Prime example, I met a lot of Venezuelan uh, Uber drivers and we would say, well, how bad is it? And they say, well, you know, chicken used to be a dollar. And we looking at each other like a dollar for like a, some parts of chicken, like a whole chicken was a dollar. Now it's $5. Now in my mind, I'm like, $5 is American prices. But they in Venezuela, they cannot pay $5 for chicken. The average Venezuelan citizen is now 19 pounds underweight. Now, I ain't going to lie to you. Americans can stand to lose some weight. We all can. We can all be healthier, men and women, because it's that 60% for both. OK, so let's not get it twisted. So inflation comes and it eats up your money. It gobbles up your money. Um, there was a poll. I wish I could put it here, but I'll put it in the community chat. The poll said, what are things Americans are concerned with? Number one was like uh, gas prices. Number two was inflation. Number three was food price. I mean, everything was related to the economics. And then it said, what did the mainstream media think is the top topics of people? LGBT, uh, some random things about abortion and something else. And it was like the disconnect from the American people is so great. Like they're doing on-street interviews and people are saying, hey, 
I care about gas prices and food prices. And they're like, well, well, that's all you care about? Yeah, I don't care about none of that other stuff. I don't care about Roe versus Wade. I don't care about who's in the office. I care about what is it looking like at that gas pump. Now, only people I feel sorry for is people who have to drive for a living. Today, I was out of the gas. I went and pumped the gas in and think anything about it. I'm looking around, and the only people out at this particular side of town where I was at, where a lot of new construction, were workers with big old F-150s, F-250s. I see a lot of 30-day tags with, with trucks right now. Now, people say, Erica, trucks are expensive. They're out of control. Uh -uh. Yes, trucks were expensive, but if you're anybody like me who really, like, obsessed, I'm obsessed with 4Runners, Toyota 4Runners, Toyota Tacomas. I'm obsessed with pickup trucks. I just ain't gonna lie to you. It's a secret. I done told it. Now y'all know. I love trucks. I'm from, from farm girl, country girl. I just love, I've been wanting to have a pickup truck ever since I got here. I crashed on and now I want to buy another one. So long story short, I've been watching and tracking the prices of autos, like up and down, right? So the prices were astronomical, right? You had four runners go from $27,000 for a used one, which is like, yeah, this is a party, to now be $53,000 for a new one. Who is paying $53,000 for a new one? Who's paying $80,000 for trucks? I saw semi trucks for $80,000. Somebody was trying to sell their old 2014 semi truck for $48,000. I said, honey, I bought a 2015 for $30,000 in, in 2019. Why would I pay you twice what I've already paid? That, there's no make that makes no sense. And I get these emails and calls all the time. Hey, I got a truck I want to sell. You know, just reaching out. I'm like, baby, why would I buy your truck for 50 when I bought the same exact year, same exact model for 32, not even four years ago? That's inflation, right? Now, there's some guy out there who wants to own his own truck, and he's just going to bite the bullet and buy these trucks. It's crazy, but they will, right? Uh, and so what ends up happening is a lot... You know, I know people love saying this, that car parts shortages, but there are football fields across the whole United States, parts of Dallas, parts of Texas that are full of used cars that no one sold and new cars. So we've got cars like that. Let's not get it twisted. We used to ship off on the ships cars to go overseas, but we got football fields full of cars, full of cars. Now, let me get to the point where I want to get to it. Uh, why is this all important? Just to try to describe to you what inflation is, right? Uh, I think my mom or somebody paid $10 for coffee the other day and was like, oh my God, $10, right? Uh, somebody also paid, uh, I think it's, I think they said $8 for some, some, some organic eggs or something, something crazy prices. Now, I want to give you the top eight ways that you're going to be able to fight inflation. And I know people are like, oh, here she go with this. I know I got to. It's actually nine. I added the ninth and you're going to know why. I added the ninth. OK, so number one is TIPS bonds, treasury, blah, 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 bonds. You can look it up. TISP, put it in the chat for me, somebody. Number two is cash. Number three is short term bonds. Number four is stocks. Number five is real estate. Number six is gold. Number seven is commodities. Number eight is cryptocurrencies. And number nine is a business. I knew you were going to hate it, but a business. Yeah, baby, I was going to talk about that business. You already know, okay? Well, that's number nine, and we'll go there last, okay? Um, okay, so first, 30 search, TIPS bonds. Look those up. Research those for your own time. I want you to be able to do it yourself. Number two is cash. A lot of people panic, and they go, oh, my God. Oh, my God, what are they going to do? Our cash is losing losing money. Oh my God. No, no. Yes, yes, it is. It is. It's losing value, but it's always better to have some loose leaf cash or stored up cash. Why? Because there will be deals. There will be sales. Now, they won't be 2008 prices. Let's be very clear. Everybody keeps thinking it's got to be deflationary. They got to they gotta let some, some of these prices have to go down. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. Like the last time I paid under 10000 for a used car was like 20 12 or something like that right so cash is king as long as you have cash there will be opportunities prime example the rv market is completely dem demolished the last three months in a row it's been like beep beep in the trash in the trash so rvs i was looking online the other day and there was an rv for eleven thousand, and my friend said this thing has to be absolutely trashed on the inside it must be wrecked we actually went to go look at it nothing is wrong with it not a thing is wrong with it. 
they just can't park it because of HOA. They realize they don't want to pay $300 a month to park it at a storage place, which there's a ton of these in Texas. $300 a month times a year is $3,600. So it's better for them to just cut their loss and sell for $11,000. Why $11,000? They know it'll be hard for somebody to come up with $20,000 without funding and payments. Funding and payments. They know that'll be hard. So what are they doing? They make the price low enough that an older couple, a, a couple with some funds set aside, a couple engineers with a, with a weekend paycheck, two or three guys could easily come up with $11,000 and give it to them. Easy. Plus, there were some new ones they had on sale down the street for $11,000. So they're trying to compete with that. Again, thank you, Brian Allen. A profitable business is the best one to me. That's number nine. We're going to go over it in a second. So cash, we're still on number two with cash. Somebody take a picture of this screenshot. I love this. Somebody screenshot this to me. Take a picture of this of this on the screen. Mallory, $5 super chat. You changed my life. I got in a boot camp for, for the cloud and start next month. I'm starting biz then too. Congratulations. I love it. That's why we do what we do. You know, honestly. This is why we do it, because we have people coming here, they find new information, they change their life. That's a clip right there. <laughs> I'm going to clip that. Uh, but this is why we this is why we started the clip. Let me go ahead and give you the clip. This is why we started the Classy Clown blog. I felt like people lacked exposure to information. We're giving them information. They take the information. They change their life. They super chat, and we just we just like, congratulations. Congratulations. I'm really grateful and happy that you took the information and did something with it. That's what you said. So anyway, all right. So back to cash. Number two is cash. So having cash can help you on smaller deals. One time there was an espresso machine that was for sale for 7000 My mom was able to give the lady cash, hard or cash, for $3,000 and she took it. And she's like, I've been trying to sell this thing forever. There's 3000 in cash. Got it up out of there. Great day. Um... There's a lot of times you're just going to run across deals where the person is pressed for income because here's the nature of people. You have to fight to not be average, y'all. The nature of people is just to kind of swoop, dead fish floats upstream, right? A lot of people want to come out here and do bare minimum work at their job, drive the newest car, live in the best house and be like, what's, what's the problem? And so now they're hitting the friction of inflation. This ain't even a recession yet. Now, technically we are, but again, you know, all the markers, they need to call it a recession. They'll probably call it July 28th and we'll officially be in a recession. But at the end of the day, y'all, I'm telling y'all, this, this is where people who are lazy and they've been coasting get scared. They're all over the internet. They holler and they cover, they hooping and hollering about 9.1% inflation, all right? They hop, they holler about it. Already, already, somebody's in here. If you want to go be a contrarian, go be over there somewhere else, okay? Go somewhere else and be a contrarian. That's not what this video is about. So already these people are hooping and hollering, carrying on, oh my God, oh my God. Uh, you know, like they're losing their mind. Okay, block ministry. Have a great day. Please go, go start your own channels and cry and do crazy theories and conspiracy stuff up over there. Okay, block ministry. Love you. Have a great day. Um, so. Cash is, makes you able to be flexible, to be able to offer somebody something. Um, people always will take cash. Uh, I, I know three situations right now where um, a guy was a contractor, deal went south, um, you know, couldn't pay back loans. He gave him a house. He literally gave this woman a whole damn house in another state. And she had to go 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 collect it. She got the title, everything. And and, and the, the debt was so small. It was like less than 15 grand. So what happens is, when times are tight and cash is tight, you start selling assets. And that's what people are going to do out here. They're going to sell assets like crazy. So so that's just something you're going to have to deal with it, right? They're going to be selling assets. They need the money. They need it. They need JG Wentworth, I need the money now. Okay? So have some cash. Save up some. I know, you know, I used to have the mindset and I still do, but it really came to hurt me. That if money was just sitting in my bank, it was dead. I had to go put it in investment. I had to go put in some stocks. I had to go put it somewhere. I had to make it move into a money CD or something. And what that did is that really hurt me when there were times where somebody was talking crazy to me or did something. And it was like a just $2,000 thing. And I could just gave them $2,000 in cash instead of having to let me liquidate some of this stock and move it around. Right? 
And so that's the thing that makes me angry because when you need cash to shut somebody up, JG went worse out, like, here's your money, shut the hell up. You need you need cash, right? Now you can take loans against your stocks, but that's another thing. Okay. So number three, short-term bonds. Again, these are year to five years, different things like that. That's what you'll start seeing. Okay. Uh, short-term bonds give you some returns on your money. That's conversation to me is more for retirees. Just going to say that. Number four is stocks. Again, now people are going to be, oh, no, you're going to the stock market. It's going down. Okay. Real traders. Again, Terry Gioma, Todd Milley, Diamond Dave. They come on the channel. They've told you multiple times. Real traders make money whether the market goes up or goes down because you're actually applying a skill. Now, I've said this before, but I'm going to know I'm going to lose y'all again. If, if you had a stock that goes up or down every day a dollar, you literally could make money nonstop. This is what people have done for the, I know people have been doing this for the past six years. They just trading up and down a stock every day. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. That's all they're doing. Just trading in and out of a stock that moves a dollar a day. But that's a whole conversation. I don't want to lose y'all. Go buy their courses and let them explain that deeper to you. Okay. Number six. Oh, number five is real estate. Again, uh, Ryan Pieta, I, I really want to do a master class on him and explain to y'all what I'm talking about. But Ryan Pieta, um, what's a little short dude? Graham Stephan, these people, they are liquidating this internet presence to the max so that they can do what? Make more millions in real estate because ultimately, they made their bulk of their money. Now, Graham Seven sold some properties, but you guys got to understand, this is a, this is the trick of inflation in certain cities. Oh, I have a million dollars in, in, in real estate. Well, you live in California. That could be one house. That could be one house. That's a trick, right? So if somebody tells me I've got a million in real estate in Detroit, I'm like, oh, who are you? If they say they got a million in Ohio, that's a whole different conversation. When someone tells me they sold a million dollars in real estate in Austin, Texas, I remember someone said that to our friends, and he was like, so you sold three houses. Because this one house is worth, three, th on average, 300000 So now somebody tells me they sold a million in real estate in Austin, I'm going to be like, so you sold two houses? Two houses. This is what you sold, right? That's it. That's what they're telling you. So you got to really listen for the cues on money, the amounts, and inf inflation. So real estate, you're going to have a ton of people who are going to become millionaires in real estate. And... um. This guy was like, why are you building houses? Erica? That's, it's crazy. You know, what about this? What about that? I said, listen, dude, by the time I build these two houses and the valuation for them, the appraisal value, because they're brand new, brand new, everything is $1.4 million. If I do a cash out refi, even at 80%, 70%, I'm pulling a million dollars out. Let's say worst case scenario, something goes sideways and I need to sell them both. I'm pulling out a million plus dollars. And that is why I was like, oh, now that that's been explained to me, no problem. Here I am. I'm your girl. I'm ready. Let's build a house, baby. A house and some rental property in the back, <laughs> right? So again, this is that, that when they explained that to me, that's all I needed. I, I looked at the math. I went over the math. I talked to GCs. I talked to people. I said, okay, what's this? What's this? Um, the land we have in Cranberry right now, um, I think I'm clearing it or I'm going to try to find some people to clear it next week. I'll take photos and pictures. I closed on two of those landlock deals for two ninety five. So if you're on the private YouTube side of things, you saw the whole contract. You saw all that stuff I put over there. That's for you guys who are in the membership side of YouTube, and also for those in Wealth Wednesday. I'll also explain in Wealth Wednesday one of the Wednesdays. I think the one in August, late August, how I got the properties, what's the price point, the start to building, the perk test, all that stuff. But if you're at the boat party, not anybody's house is right there at the boat party. So that was my reasoning for real estate. And even in the last recession, I knew people that continued to build, whether it was 2008, 2009, they just built slower, right? Or even flippers who flip, but very slowly. Uh, remodelers who, who remodeled, but very slowly, right? Because it, you need money to keep moving. One of the most dangerous things is when the chairs stop. The chairs stop moving, the money stops moving, you got a problem. You got a big problem and you better solve it quick. And this is what happens. 86% of all businesses suffer cash flow issues, which is why a lot of businesses close because people are not managing the cash flow, right? Right. So again, real estate, you're still going to see people. What's, what's the problem right now? People can't find wholesale deals. They, 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 they run tight on the budget for flipping deals. 
So now they tried to go, everybody in their mom tried to jump to apartments because people told them they need apartments. Brad Cardone has been telling them that for years now. Well, now the apartments are so overpriced, they're ridiculous. Okay, what's the next step? People are building their own apartments. I'm literally, uh, check out Simple Passage Festival. Don't take my word on it. They're building uh, in Huntsville, Alabama, a brand new from the ground up, mixed use, 319 unit uh, apartment building, apartment complex, and the, the stores in the front. The master plan community model, y'all, will always make people money. People want to be where it's new, where it's exclusive, uh, where the school is superb, and, and they have stay over their little master plan community. You're going to see people become millionaires in the middle of recession via real estate. Now, what about tax liens, Erica? Again, you have $6 billion in tax liens. That's going to go on auction this, this year and next year, basically. October, November, December, if you're in my taxing class, you should be getting ready for October, November, December. It'll be just a landslide of stuff, right? So be very smart. Be very smart, okay? But yeah, they, we'll go deep dive in a lot of the private videos because, again, I keep telling y'all, the reason people are getting jammed up out here on the internet is because they out here acting a fool. They're telling every little secret and thinking they're giving you gems, and that doesn't help you. If you aren't, if you are about to be homeless, me telling you about tax liens ain't going to help you. If you're about to be homeless, me telling you how to build a house is not going to help you. You need to go all the way back to start one, get the foundation, get some side hustles, stabilize yourself. Once you stabilize yourself, then you can start to entertain other options. But people don't want to be honest with themselves. No one wants to say, hey, man, we're about to be there. Homeless, what's going on? Like people don't have that realization thing, right? It, it, it really affects their mindset to have to be honest with themselves. Right. That's why you see 600 pound life. They'd be like, I don't understand. You'd be like, baby, you can barely walk to the bathroom. Like it's too much. It's too much. OK. Right. It's just too much. And people don't understand that. So if you're enjoying the content so far, hit a one in the comments for me. So I know and I'll just keep going to finish out my rest. Number six is gold. I know y'all like gold. Erica, Come on, man. Listen, relax, relax. Um, gold. If you go to Indian weddings, it's very common to see gold given right like they give gold um and, and it's very common so they give gold uh whether it's necklaces it's the cuban chain it's terrible why because gold is real money and in india it was a signal of you had wealth your family had money to give and so now even more than likely like a, a guy called dave ramsey saying he's probably gonna get about fifty thousand dollars in gold for his wedding that's just the custom. They in America now, so they got some money. He might get a hundred thousand in gold. He don't know. Depend on the wedding size. Um, and Dave Ramsey said, "Sell it and buy a house." Well, here's the thing: if I was him, I'd keep the gold for as long as possible. So I just had to sell it. If I had to liquidate it, there's like real emergencies, then I liquidate it. But he could slow driply liquidate that over a year, and him and his wife would be great. Um, it's like a store of value. Why would you let it go? So I know everybody's mad at Dave Ramsey. You should tell him not to sell the gold and all that stuff. But I'm like, chill out. It, it's also a custom thing, right? It's also a cultural thing. So uh, gold is one of those things. Number seven is commodities. Now, y'all know I posted, uh, well, it may not be posted yet. I thought I posted on Community Wall, but maybe tomorrow. I did post inside Wolf Wednesday's Facebook group where it's a chart. And on the chart of Monopoly, that bottom row, the foundation has some real single family houses, it has some land, and it has some farmland. Now, many people push against the farmland thing, but where do commodities come from? Commodities are raw materials, agricultural, metals, oil. Those are those are commodities. Invest in commodities. There are several people on here on YouTube who have taken their money and they're buying oil rigs here in Texas. Now you may say, well, that's crazy. They're gonna lose money. No, no, no. They're selling that oil. <laughs> they're selling their products again. Million Dollar Closer, go look him up. Million Dollar Closer and Nick Perry. We had Nick Perry on the channel. Go look at their Instagram. I actually ran into them in Panama. That's how small this world is, that we were in Panama at an exclusive restaurant, one that we will take everybody to for the uh, Panama trip, and I'm going to have about 10 steaks on me. You guys are going to be steak full at that point. Uh, and we ran into their group of millionaires at the same location in Panama in another country. That's how small the world is. It's very small. It, the amount of people really doing it is small. I I want you to understand. You may have cash flow issues. Shit, sometimes I have cash flow tightness issues. But as long as you are 
shredding uphill on the investments and you have the big cash out payout. Listen, when I cash out these two properties at the same time and then I got two more coming behind them, I, okay, talk to me. I'll be acting brand new. I'm going to be acting straight, ignorant. Okay, just let you know. So, number seven is commodities. So, while we're in Panama, I called up our friend with the cacao farm and the coffee beans. And I said, I need you to come and talk about investing in agriculture in Belize and Panama so that my guests that come have the heads up. Now, don't don't get it twisted. We're going to even do some more on the back end of that. I said, listen, we need to go back to Belize and we need you to show us the cacao farms in person. So I'm going to take a small group, maybe like 10, because it, it's hard to like, you're on a little plane and you're in the, you know, you're uphill, but it's it's nice area. But like just 10, maybe maybe 12 at most to that part of Belize. And then we're going to go from there. We're going to see the cacao farm and we'll see that. But that's on another trip. That's not on the Panama trip. He will be he will be in the room talking though about the investments and the opportunities in agriculture in Panama and Belize. Now I'm gonna start trying to find. I already have a video. I thought I do, but I may have to check again. I gave to uh, Peter to edit about investing in farmland and vo investing in um, community supported agriculture is supporting local agriculture, right? How do you fight hyperinflation? You need to have access to food. You need to have access to food. People, people will be robbing stores. They already do it now, but they will be robbing stores in some locations because they're so hungry. You need to have access, direct access to food. The average grocery store only has three days of food supply. I am telling you, as a person who family does this every year, go buy a cow, split it with your family. Go buy a bunch of chickens and buy some cow, but cow mostly. Because every spring, every May, there's going to be some mo cows. I know people right now who are very wealthy who are buying their cows in, in advance for next year. Why are they buying their cats in advance? Why are they already paying the farmer for next year's cow? Because they know between the feed and the gas and the prices, that meat's going to go up. I'm already reached out to three farms here in Georgetown, Texas, and the Wagyu farm out there in Maynard. They already sold out. I was like, well, I, I just want to put my little... So I put my four hundred dollars down for the quarter, and they're like, "No, it's sold out, baby." I said, "Ain't no cows, not even one cow. What about a sick cow? What about an old cow? They ain't no them left either. Nah, nah, them cows are sold out, y'all. They're not playing out here. I want you to understand, them cows is sold out. Community support agriculture one. Number two is actually owning actual farmland. Number three is actually partner with a farmer. Uh, what people don't understand is." Sharecropping is kind of back in existence. I know that sounds weird, but you literally could have a farm and a farmer want to rent um, your land from you for X amount of thousands of dollars a month. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. People are doing that. Uh, they just are. They just want to be on a farm so bad, but they can't buy their own land. Literally, it's sharecropping back again, which is insane to me, but hey, do what you do. Do what you do. So again, commodities, commodities, commodities. I don't, I really want to do a whole video on this, but I'm gonna try to put it over to the um, Just Stop Profits channel. I know we're behind on batching videos over there, but we'll have them batched out. But like oil, I'm telling you, and I know I say in a country oil, but Exxon Mobil, double down on that, double down on every oil producing company. I just, I, that's not stock advice. That's just my opinion of what I'm doing to fight hyperinflation. How about that? Let me just do it that way. But commodity, agriculture, I don't care if you own uh, a farm out in another state and you sub, sub, you know, share crop out basically uh, a certain number of acres, I would put in the clause that they kind of like drop you 10%. Hey, like I'll give you a discount on the rent as long as you drop me 10% of them crops. You dig what I'm saying? And that's hard to enforce, but that's a whole other conversation. Here. Somebody said they like I shoot from the hip. I mean, that's just that's just my mentality. Now, if you if you come over here with multiple pages, that's great. Let me see. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying not drop this thing. Let me do this. Okay. Uh, I think we have. Uh, we can find another person to bring on about project management, though. So then back to the show. Number seven was commodities, right? We finished commodities. Number eight is cryptocurrency. I know everybody's like, no, Erica, no, not the cryptocurrency. I know. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. It's it's the technology that's the future. 
It's the tech that's involved. That's the future. I want you to just take a deep breath. It's the tech that's involved. That is the future. Okay. XRP, one of the highest ranking senators in Congress is like on the board of XRP. One of the Federal Reserve folks is on the board of XRP. I'm not going down the rabbit hole conspiracy on XRP, but I am certain there are some of these coins you're going to see. Now, out of 18,000 coins, are some going to crash? Yes, almost 90% of them. But there's Bitcoin, and then there's those other coins. And that's not a conversation I'm willing to do on here. Made 5 can probably do a better one. If you go look at the video, we have Made 5. That's a good video. Um, but yeah, it's a whole different conversation. It's a whole different conversation. But there will be room for growth in those spaces. Why? Because the loan ability, right? We We showed in the past video where... There's bias in the banking system, but they could get they could buy up a certain amount of coins and take a loan out against it. Same thing with the stock market. I could buy, I could put one hundred thousand dollars into the stock market and I can take thirty five percent loan with M1 finance. That's one. But I can take eighty five percent against my money with certain capital companies. Go look that up on your own. That's your own research. I'm not going, I don't want to lead anybody astray or go down any rabbit holes, but that's a, you can do that. You literally take up to 85%. There are four major companies that will help you. And PNC, PNC Bank that y'all know of, they will give you almost 85% on your uh, stock portfolio account. Where does that come from? That comes from the fact that they know they can take a hold of those shares. And two, if they deal with older customers who are 35, 50 years old, 60, 70 years old, they're more than likely to have what? Shares of stocks that they can buy. So there's that. So again, cryptocurrency, banking, you know, I just don't want you to guys get lost in the sauce there. Um, yes, person sure. Okay. So number nine was a business. You already knew. You knew I had to say a business because here's the number one way you're going to fight hyperinflation is being able to move your prices being able to provide services, being able to hire people. And I know people are like, no, Eric, I just won't get a job. Yes, there will always be jobs for highly skilled folks. Tech folk, today, the, the information came out today. There are 700,000 open software engineering related jobs in America today. Guess how many engineers graduated today, this year? 80,000. Let me say that again. There's 700,000 open jobs and 80,000 people graduated. Why do you think Kamala Harris and all them folks is trying so hard to get over half a million H-1B1 visas in India over here? What's going to happen when those folks come from India? Chain migration. Y'all don't understand what's about to happen here. Chain migration, people can bring up to 12 family members. Sisters, brothers, um, first cousins for work, mom and dad, and grandparents is this extra central. So you already see Donald Trump's brother-in-law and father-in-law been in America 30 years with nobody, nobody saying a word, no immigration issues ever. And then you, you know what I'm saying? So again, there's people who are doing that right now in America. When ICE came for Houston, Texas, the representative over the Asian community down there jumped up on the mic and said, let me tell you what you're not going to do. I'm a city council member. You say, you're not going to come through Houston and grab these Asian men, business owners. You're not doing it. You're not grabbing these business owners. See how they use the word? They didn't say illegal immigrants. They said these Asian business owners. You're not coming in here and grabbing these business owners. Don't make us tell you again. And ICE did not go up in Houston grabbing Asian Americans. Now, they did grab the Africans. The Nigerians weren't speaking loud enough. They was grabbing them because the Nigerians rolled deep in Houston. Okay? So one of the big pillars and the pivot and the difference is businesses. This is why I keep telling you this country is like Monopoly. And these immigrants come over here and go, girl, this is like Monopoly. I just got to buy a house, act like I got some sense, stay married to my wife, and that's my money. Shit. This ain't, and this ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. I, I get free drink, clean drink water. What? This ain't nothing. This ain't nothing. It's too easy. I got you. No problem. I'm going I'm to live it up. And they live it up well. So again, number nine is a business because, again, if you look at Venezuela, you look at Argentina, when they had issues with their economy, they were able to daily change the prices on their food, services, all that stuff. Yeah, I saw where they discovered like $31 million. I think it was $31 million or billion in gold in Uganda. I literally told, I literally messaged Ode, O'Shea Duke Jackson. I said, hey, do I need to come over there? What's going on with the gold, right? 
See, the funny thing about, okay, wait, I got to be careful. Defamation is real. Go look up Susie O, credit card fraud or debit card fraud or her failed company. Y'all, y'all have short term memories. Y'all have short term memories. These people have bad, these people be giving bad advice and be getting taken to court. That's all I'm going to say on that. Exactly. Used to work in a bank. Indians used to have so much gold in them boxes. They believe it's a real thing. Listen, so so you going out to the store, and I mean, I want you to understand, when everybody's like, oh, ain't no money in the black community, y'all, then why do Indians, Asians, everybody in their mom can put a store there? They put car washes. They put, you name it, they build apartments out there. They put money in those hoods because there's basic daily services you will always need. Always need. Basic daily services. Laundromats, right? I kept seeing more laundromats put out. And people are like, why are they still building laundromats? Laundry is so cheap, right? To get a to get a wash and dryer is like 300 bucks a piece. A cheap one, a very basic white one. And people are like, people literally do rich to center and paying 80 bucks a month for a year. So they done pay three times what the machine was worth. So people don't save up no money. They don't have no excess cash. See, a lot of people were coasting and bullshitting in their 20s. Now they wake up in their 30s. They ain't got no money. They don't have no skills. They had jobs that paid them low. And they're like, well, Erica, they need to raise the pay. No, no, no. They got high paying jobs out here. Go get them. That just is what it is. So you can either start a business. Again, we bring on Michael Sneed. He'll be at the boat party. Service business. They're going to need people to service these parts, service these roofs. HVAC supply, like, like I don't know if y'all guys understand HVAC right now, but it's a $2.4 billion industry. And if you have 48% of all home buyers buy a home in the Southeast, where are we going to have to be servicing all these HVACs, heating and cooling systems in the Southeast? Las Vegas, Nevada, all these places that use solar energy, they want to connect these different things. All this equipment, these the machines, the, all these appliances have to learn how to connect to each other. This is why they're saying you're going to see this massive return of men back to blue collar. It'll be the only place that they can, oh, I don't have to take no tests. I just got to show how to work my hands. I'll do that. Handyman come. That's what we talked about. Handyman business on this channel. Again, everybody would love to work in an office and, and, and dress pretty for work and, and sit in the AC and talk like women all day. But there will be a massive return of men going back outside to work hard. To work hard. The Lord built y'all for muscle. That's all. Just, just appreciate it. So anything you can think of business-wise, this is why you see so many people in the digital business space moving around. Right? Why I want to do the case study on Ryan PA, I went and checked on his website today. Dude has like nine major companies he's invested with. Right? He's got the he's got the basically the QuickBooks for digital real estate folks. Right? Then he's got uh, creator investments. Him and Graham Stephan, got to be a credit investor, invest with him and Graham Stephan in properties. Then he's got Ryan P.A. to capital. You got to come up with 50K off the rip. Then he's got an e-com launcher where if you got 40K in credit cards, again, this is business. This is all business. 40K in credit card lines, they can set you up with e-com. Now, maybe you can say, well, e-commerce and drop shipping is dead. It's dead for who? Paper towels, linen, dryer, all that stuff is always in high demand, baby. It's always in high demand. What are you talking about? Right? Dead for who? Dead where? Pay attention. Right? Ticket reselling. That's a business. This I'm headed to Las Vegas World Ticket Conference. What are they talking about there? Ticket resale. Right? You got so much going in and out. Resale into your account. Why? Because people wait to the last minute to buy tickets for a show. They wait to the, the weekend of... Be like, man, these prices are crazy. I saw people spending five hundred dollars for Usher's and Friends tickets. They gonna spend five hundred for Beyonce, but then ask you why you can't do a pop up in Houston. But they'll drive four hours for Beyonce. They'll drive. Trust me. So again, having a business where money is doing this, it's moving. You'll be okay. You just gotta watch your margins. Have sign up for that QuickBooks. Make sure you're going up and numbers not down. Um, it's when you stop moving that it's dangerous. You gotta keep swimming. You gotta keep swimming. There's a reason there's a song for that. Keep swimming. Okay. Having a business will be the number one people you see that would be out here just chilling, thriving will be business owners. And and if they and like literally Cardo mentioned when I was there, it was like you have different breakpoints in a business. Business can get from zero to three million, no problem. 
Now, when it gets from five million to eight million, you start having problems. When it gets from, I think, ten million to eleven to twelve million, real major problems. Sometimes they just collapse. That happens in a lot of business because it's either a person's doing it, a solopreneur, they're doing all this stuff. They got to duplicate themselves, but that's a whole conversation. And as the economy has issues, you're gonna meet lots more guys and girls who are ready to get on get on board. What you talking about? Come to your office. I want to work remote. You want to come in this office and get more money? Yeah, I sure do. They're going to get on your page and they're going to run, help run your business. Because if they help run your business, they get money. And, and you're going to see a return to that. I know people don't believe it, but you're going to see a return to that. So again, TISP bonds, cash, short-term bonds, stocks, real estate, gold, commodities. Number eight is cryptocurrency. And number nine is a business. So I just wanted to get in and get that out to you guys. I'm going to look over a few comments I got and I'm getting up out of here. Because I got to be in Las Vegas in a little bit. So, yeah, flash mobs and stores, they're already doing that. That's why I don't even go to, like, when people tell me, oh, I got to hit the mall, I'd be like, ew, what are you, 1995? Who the fuck goes to the mall? Like, who, who goes to look at people at the mall? I, I, I go to bars, restaurants, other places. I go to conferences. Like, why would I be in the mall walking around looking for people? That's ridiculous. To me, that's some whack shit. But, you know, everybody eats his own. There's no income ceiling above your head with the business. Prices go up, you adjust yours as well. Facts. 13 trillion in gold. Good gracious. Bitcoin, March 20, 26,000. Today, 20,000. Exactly what crashed. It's hard. You can't tell people nothing. I just let them listen. America is a property state. There's only one part of the United States, and that's property property. I'm telling you, listen. It, don't get it twisted. Anybody out here on this there you go. There you go, Mark. Mark said it. I didn't say it. Anybody out here on this internet trying to tell you to not uh uh to not I'm take this off, to not buy property, I don't trust them, y'all. I'm gonna tell you right now. Anybody telling you not to buy property, I don't trust them. Because they're telling you that's complete the country we live in is built on asset ownership. You owning an asset, you having a business, you having investments. You being able to have leftover cash. Anybody selling you outside of that, I don't trust them. You go to Venezuela. You go to these other countries. You're not going to have no safety net. You don't show up to their country with no money. They send your ass home. Germany was Germany before now. Germany in the past, maybe 10 years ago. If you were there, you were homeless, and you were not German, they fly you out of there. They fly you out of there. You got to get out of here. Peace out. You are in France doing that? They used to do that. A lot of people would... Pretend to be homeless and get flights home. That that that's you don't only in America can you out here and be homeless and demand social security and, and welfare and all this stuff. I'm telling y'all, it's a wrap. We're gonna be like other countries. You're gonna have to sink or swim. You're gonna have to move out to the middle of nowhere. Sorry about you. Get on out of here. Um uh, Nick Taylor put a video up about child support and he was shocked as he was reading it. Like I said. The national average is at most five thousand seven hundred dollars a year is what the average man pays for child support. Less than five hundred dollars a month. And out of those numbers, they only collect sixty percent of that. So forty percent of those men ain't even paying that. That's just what they're awarded to pay. So when you have a country where they're crying on the internet night and day about five hundred dollars, we in a bad shape, baby. You gotta be in bad shape. You gotta go get a different job. You gotta go get a better career. You're in bad shape. It's dangerous. That's a dangerous spot to be in where 500 can make or break you. Because I'm telling you, if these people had these kids full time, they give them back. Okay. I've seen it. So look, how do we fight inflation? Got to keep the money moving. Higher paid jobs, assets, um, assets, 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 you guys. Like be able to sell the asset, be able to liquidate the asset, be able to get rid of it. So that's gold, that's uh, cars, that's you name it, right? You name it. That's what it is. If you look at most times I were in a park complex with a lot of Hispanic community, they had a lot of excess cars. Why? That springtime, you got to get that $3,000 Honda. You know what I mean? That's just where it's at. So let me see here. Real quick. Let me look through here real quick. Tulsa Gump has a lot of active refineries. Yep. I already know Erica buying up all the Beyonce tickets. Howdy, I'm going to buy the mugs up. Sell them to y'all at high prices because y'all don't be listening. People will find the money with someone. Again, like that woman, it was a woman and her brother, her grandmother, the grandmother of the son. He in jail, they find $9,000 to help pay for his safety. 
Where was that nine thousand dollars to send a old Pookie Pookie to school? Where was that nine thousand dollars to get him in tutoring? Where was that nine thousand dollars to put him through community college so he could have a trade? Hmm? Where was that money so he could have a decent car, a better attorney? But they got nine thousand dollars to put in prison and give it to a bunch of uh, muscle bound dudes who gonna beat him up anyway. That's the kind of stupid shit I can't. I can't like people find money for what they want. There's a tire market for people flipping sports cars. eBay second high fire. People are shooting in Target. I'm telling you, like y'all, people find money for what they want. Again, people find money with them. Listen, I tell people this all the time, Lanny. Grant Cardone knows the benefits of owning his home. His father bought his dream home, which was, I guess, top of the market there in Louisiana. And when he died, that mother sold that home and had the insurance life policy. She not only raised five kids, she never worked again a day in her life. And she lived another 40 years. because I think she was 10 years younger than the husband. She lived a whole nother 40 plus years. So when Grant Card don't tell you, you don't need to buy no home, baby. Come on now. Come on now. We like there anybody telling you to do the opposite. I can't. I cannot trust you. Eli, I literally invest in Cardone Capital. But I'm telling you, anybody telling you to not buy, you know what I'm saying at all. I don't trust that shit. Don't listen to them. You look at look at what they're doing and look at what they're saying. That's the best way I say that. Look at what they're doing. Greg Cardone has a home now in Florida, top of the market, and he bought a home back in California, a state he cried about so much. Ah, oh, California, California. He went back and bought a multi-million dollar home from a Russian person in California. Come on. Come on. He telling you not to buy homes. He buying homes? Well, Erica, that's different. Okay. Again, pay attention. What are people saying, what they're doing? And sometimes y'all listen to people at a certain part in their journey and it don't apply to you. That's my whole thing. A lot of y'all are here like, yeah, these women, they're going to wish that was me and with me. I'm like, boo, you're 19 with no money and no house. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Anybody looking for you at 20 to do all these things that a 50 some year old man is doing? Get out of here. That's silly. Y'all listening to people who are 60 years old giving you bad advice at 20. Bad advice. You got people out here on this internet. Listen, I was out with a group of people and, and they may see this video and they may be like, Erica. And the women was like, girl, don't get married. Take your time. Wait till you 30. Yeah, I was like, I told her, I said, ma'am, you're 24. Get married tomorrow if you can. Shit, get get on the, get it over with, girl. Get, go find somebody while you're young and go sit it down. Don't listen to these women. And these women were all married because they're like, Erica, single women keep other single women married. Single. No, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes married women keep single women single. They be like, oh, it's no rush. Girl, you don't want this headache, girl. You be like, no, I do want the headache. I want somebody paying my bills so I can sit back like you. Trust me. Trust me. Look at all these moms out here. They be like, girl, you know, I got to be stay-at-home mom because these kids. What you doing from eight to four? And then you put the kids in after school program. So what you doing from eight to five? Chilling. She working out. She over here at Starbucks. She walking around. She living her best life with her girlfriends. But she's telling you to wait on getting married. Girl, man, don't believe that. These men out here on the internet telling y'all not to get married. And they got whole wives cooking meals, living their best life, taking family vacations. Okay. <laughs> Careful the advice you get. Careful. <laughs> like, of all the advice you want to take, you sure you want to take that advice? Okay. Just I just want you to understand. Careful on that stuff. Careful. Grant had folks thinking cash or track. Girl, when he was saying that, I said, cash or track? This man is smoking crack. I refuse to sell my grandma's house even though I have a separate home. Don't ever sell it. People telling others not to own only do want them to keep renting. That's, that don't make no sense to me. Even when I see people in Ohio, in Detroit, who've been renting their whole life and houses are sitting around them for $30,000. They could literally... Pay their mortgage off in 10 years, have no mortgage for the rest of their life, just property taxes, which is like a thousand for the year. And they out there renting their whole damn life. It don't make no sense. It's stupid. Listen, Greg Cardo ads on YouTube are so I never liked him since he got to buy a mama a house mindset for black guys. Ooh. Yeah, he was doing some edgy stuff. He was doing it on the edge. I said, Grant, I ain't got time for that. Again, remember, he's Greek. 
Look, married women keep single. I'm telling y'all, like, see, people don't, people got to be careful. They, they be blaming other single women. Oh, it's because the miserable single women. No, no, no. It's the married women telling you these niggas ain't shit. Like, what? <laughs> Just pay attention. So now as we go into a recession, you see she quiet over there because she got a whole husband helping her pay bills. She got a whole team member over there helping her. Don't listen to that stuff. I'm just saying do what's smart. All right. Some of y'all ain't never gonna make a lot of money. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm just saying some of y'all are never gonna make a lot of money, and that's okay. You just need to make the best decision for you. And you see them homosexuals go and find somebody else to stay in. Y'all need to figure yourself out. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> they can be, and if when they die, you got the right insurance policy even better. <laughs> I got an aunt who husband died and like she got military pension. She got another pension. She got all kind of pensions just coming to the house. She just traveling, living her best life. Okay, listen. Don't don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. All right, you guys. This is what I had. This is your girl Erica Classic on the blog. I will be up in Detroit in August, selling all the last of the properties, getting rid of the stuff in Cleveland. Again, it's asset relocation time uh, and getting stuff gone. And finish my build up, my new construction in Florida in Cranberry, Texas. I'm so excited to show y'all those properties. But again, listen, hi, listen, I'll be going off track. I gotta get back. So anyway, again, your tips for again for hyperinflation is tips, TIPS bonds, two cash, number three short term um, bonds, number four stocks, number five real estate, number six gold, number seven commodities, which is oil, agriculture, all that good stuff, and number eight is cryptocurrencies. Number nine is a business. So. This is your girl Erica, Classic on Blog. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks for supporting the channel and hit the like button on your way out. Thanks.